Welcome everyone to another session in our Women Lead webinar series brought to you by Connected Women of Influence. I'm Michelle Burquist, your host today, as we're delighted to bring yet another informative webinar to our Association of Professional Women. Our Women Lead webinars are designed for you, the professional leader in business, whether you're an aspiring women leader or a woman leading people or projects or teams or even a company or business. Our goal is to select topics and themes that support your goal to lead, achieve, and succeed more effectively in business. As a little bit of logistics, our webinars are just shy of one hour, um, and at the half hour mark, we'll be opening up the lines and answering any questions that you've submitted online during our presentation portion of our webinar. And the content portion is a half hour. And so um, what I'm excited about is our topic today um, of our webinar is how to attract attention, stand out, and connect with your ideal clients in a matter of seconds. And I'm pretty excited about our webinar leader today and our thought leader. Let me introduce her. Patricia Bean is the owner of Website Imaging Consulting. And dig this, I've got this amazing bio about this woman. She's got 30 years behind the camera. And Patricia explains that her approach to photography is more like storytelling than documenting. According to Patricia, being a photographer has given her the ability to see beyond the obvious. She found it has little to do with the things you see and everything to do with the way you see them. She's a commercial photographer and it's according to Patricia, less about the way she thinks about a story should be told and more about listening for the purpose of the photograph. She always asks, what do you want this image to say and what response do you want to elicit? She can create, whoa, sexy, edgy, or you tell her what you want, but that's her approach and she uses it on every job and project. And her task, therefore, is to craft the images to improve the visual impact of you as a client and your brand to illustrate your ideas and express your authentic story. Now, I could read more for you. My goodness, this woman is all that. But, um, but when Patricia launched Website Image Consulting, which is an extension to the style that she approaches in her professional photography, she wanted to create a way for business owners to discover what their marketable story is. And what Patricia does is she shows how businesses can use the key elements of a successful photography and apply that to marketing. So I want all of you to help me in welcoming our thought leader this morning, or this afternoon now, Miss Patricia Bean. Patricia, say hello to all of our attendees. Well, hello, and thanks, Michelle. I'm happy to be here, and happy for the opportunity to share these ideas. Thank you. Thank you. You are uh, ready for G I for Go, my dear. Okay. Cool, I'm ready to go. <laughs> I've been self-employed uh, for over 20 years, uh, behind the camera, like you said, 30. Learning, growing, and always changing. I go from totally throwing up my arms in frustration to, hey, I'm getting somewhere. And what was true then and is true today is that people with good ideas and talents are many. And what it takes to stay in the game is determination, vision, passion, belief, and marketing. But even more important, at least for the long haul, is to really embrace your very own why. When we understand that we don't have to prove how good we are to compete in our markets, it's important to know that we have, that what we have that uh, someone else needs. And as long as you have a valuable offer, you don't have to define self-worth or how good you perform or even by comparison. If you do, it's a client by client roller coaster. And trust me, I even still do that. And what I've learned is that the better I got at knowing myself and doing what truly makes me happy contributed toward developing what I'm truly meant to be doing. I am a small business consultant and I help entrepreneurs be seen and heard by improving their online presence with authentic messaging and powerful visual impact. I used to be a photographer. At the core, business growth is really about your personal evolution. It's really about you. So I'm not going to show you how to market. You already probably already know how to do and are doing that now. I am going to share how your current marketing can be improved. And I'm going to show you why it's important to take the lead role in your business visibility 
and how to add your own secret ingredients to perfect client attraction. Okay, I've just hit my slide, but let me get here. There we go. So glad that worked. Okay, so. Uh, <laughs> Hang in there. <laughs> yeah. It's always good when technology works. <laughs> That's right. We depend on it. So we all know building relationships are important and are today's best approach in marketing. And for good reason. Marketing research and psychological studies are reporting on how people are making buying decisions based on how they feel and less on what you sell. And you may find it interesting that comparisons of products are not as influential as how people feel about you and your business. Knowing this is huge and applying it is even bigger. Who you are in business and how you show up. I'm a firm believer that when people follow their hearts and they listen to their inner guidance, the business they build has a much greater chance of success and personal satisfaction. It's funny, when I talk to people about their wine business, it often comes down to making decisions and setting reasonable goals by tapping into their natural tendencies and strengths. This is a different way of approaching do what you love and the money will follow. Stand out and be noticed. The one thing that differentiates you is you. And when you get real clear on the why, what you do, who you are, what you value, and we help with that, the next step is to be sure your values and personality show up in the brand and in the content you produce to promote your business. And we help with that also. And because you are the driving force of business, it's your vision, it's your ideas, and your passion. It stands to reason that you show up in your business. Trust is established when you share more of your personality and provide a way for people to feel a connection with you on a personal level. And this is especially true when the owner's passion and personality is a consideration when making important decisions and goals. It's never just about the money, and we can't afford to hide behind our business or expect our businesses to soar without us taking the lead role. So if you make the mistake like I did when I first started my photography business by thinking that being really good guaranteed success, think again, there's always going to be someone better. And there is another way to build and grow business. And it is a lot more fun than trying to follow someone else's success model. Consumers identify with your brand based on their different personality traits, values, attitudes, interests, and lifestyles. So it's important to understand the demographics and the psychographics of your target market. Choosing who you want to work with should be based on your own values, interests, and lifestyles. And the best way for them to relate to you is by making sure you're being represented and you're speaking their language. People need to see themselves in your business. Marketing is drastically changing from the way that we receive information. But the purpose for the delivery is pretty much the same. We still need to attract attention, retain interest, long enough for others to get a feel for what we do and to make a positive impression. That's a really tall order for an attention deficit audience that's barraged by thousands of marketing messages every day. So what if you spent less time convincing and instead stand out so bright that the right people can't help but be attracted? Taking someone from not really wanting to buy to being ready to buy is extremely hard work. Imagine spending less time persuading people to work with you, and instead spend more time connecting with those who are inherently more likely to want to work with you and need less persuasion. There are only two ways to influence human behavior. You can manipulate it or you can inspire it. So how are people going to be inspired to choose you over the competition? And what are people really looking for? Well, if we take a conventional approach and people are just looking for the solution to their problem, your best course of marketing is to be the solution. That's all well and good, but many other businesses are offering something similar. So is the answer to outrun the competition? 
It sounds ludicrous, but if your business description relies on how many years you've been in business and other accolades, such as your credentials or your amazing education, guess what? That's exactly what you're doing. You've likely posted a list of logical reasons why one would choose you over the competition, and most of them are probably about you. I mean, it stands to reason to share your qualifications, right? But actually, these are only superficial aspects of who you are. You may be interested to know that researchers from the University of Texas at Austin suspect those rational reasons may have little to do with your potential client's decisions. Research study shows comparative features are important, but mostly as justification after a buyer makes a decision based on an emotional response. Let me repeat that. <laughs> comparative features are important, but mostly as a justification after a buyer makes a decision based on an emotional response. The fundamental question is whether consumers make their choices based on logical comparisons of performance or are we emotional creatures who gravitate to products that appeal to our senses, feelings, and moods? The answer to building a loyal tribe is in your ability to deeply engage your prospects' emotions, in addition to and even above their intellect. The secret sauce to containing competition is to connect the heart with the mind. Over many year, the many years of working with people in a variety of businesses, photographing products and business portraits and interiors, I've had the privilege to meet many people, and I love that everyone is so awesomely different. Even those in the same business have a unique, a unique way and reason for doing what they do. And each story behind the choices they made and how they got to where they are now is different. And I found that by nature, entrepreneurs are inspired and passionate people. I've also noticed that many are reluctant to stray too far from the mainstream when it comes to marketing, but different is what gets noticed. We're more informed now than in the past on how people make buying decisions. And there is an emerging emphasis on client experience. There are things we can do today to get noticed and connect with the people we want to be working with. And it's in your website. More than 2.4 billion people use the internet every day, and 90% of those are making purchases. Wouldn't it be nice to have a website that actually helped your clients know you're exactly right for them? Is your website making the kind of impact you need for your business to grow? Are you attracting your favorite clients? Have you ever been passed up for a job because of your website? Now, this happens whether you know it or not. And does your website make you smile? The internet has changed the way we reach potential clients and we find ourselves catering to this fast pace with the use of easy to digest informational pieces, snippets of content and short videos. And we're also seeing something else in marketing, something like creating a tribe, heart to heart marketing, client experience and immersive content. Recent research has proven that in today's market, people are looking for more, a connection to something they can believe in. And research from Nelson shows 50% of global consumers are willing to pay more for goods and services from companies that make a difference in a meaningful way. People gravitate to products because they appeal to their senses. Overall, people just want to feel right about calling you. And no matter what you do or sell, someone is going to be selling or doing the same thing. The challenge is to stand out in a way that makes you the obvious choice. Marketing relies heavily on invitational marketing, building relationships and trust, and creating circles of like-minded people. It's no longer about marketing to the masses. And when we make our websites and our brand an extension of who we are, it's personal, and personal has universal appeal. People want real. No matter how high you rank on a Google search, no one cares until they know you care. And you want your business brand to be talked about with the people you most want to serve. And your brand isn't what you say, it's, it's what other people say about it. HubSpot is one of today's most reputable, authoritative voices in marketing. 
We want to distinguish ourselves quickly. Using images effectively is smart. And picking the right image is critical. Creating photographs for marketing is the art of translating a vision. The goal is to create images which make an instantaneous, predictable, positive impression. We believe a different approach creates a different response. So take this example of a nonprofit organization. The goal is to solicit an audience that supports and identifies with the world of horses, most likely sport horses. They're intelligent and influential people that have disposable income, and as a nonprofit organization, you need to make them proud to be associated with your organization. For example, a website that they will share with others and um, with their other influential friends, preferably. <laughs> Every <laughs> element in this entire container of the website needs to match the worldview of the people that they want to speak to, the fonts, the layout, and the images. Besides changing out the images, there were a lot of other missing connections just on this home page alone. So this improved page has not been completed. It's just a mock-up um, of suggestions that I've shared with the marketing team. Now here's another example of how a website can be made personal. When I first made, met Nick, he simply told me he needed a new website. And through our visual impact consultation, we uncovered his passion. Oops. Sorry. We uncovered his passion and a deep desire for keeping friends, family, and clients safe to help protect their investments in future. His history includes Boy Scouts, Eagle Scouts, involvement in his church, and his early childhood influence with having parents in the clergy and teaching fields. He brings all of his values and work ethics into his business. His client's descriptions include people that have multiple insurance needs. And because of his vast experience and knowledge, he can take care of it all. So when designing his site, we felt it was important that people knew the person behind the business as we got to know him. So with the use of images and content, including the layout, we want people to know, to feel that they know Nick even before they meet him. Again, this site is incomplete and is still being worked on, but we have a good start in achieving our goal of letting people know Nick as a trustworthy personal agent that truly cares. Images tell your story, and your story is what people are interested in. People prefer visual content over page of words. In today's world, most people are skimming anyway, so the right image makes an impression upon impact. It's hard for consumers to choose who to work with when hundreds, even thousands of messages are vying for our attention, and it often comes down to whether or not we like what we see. It's not unlike buying an art piece. When you see it, you feel it. It's been my experience that an art piece that speaks to you has found an energetic transfer from soul to soul. You just know it's meant for you. Choosing the right collection of images is complex and images should never be used just as decoration. Your images are a direct communication. Your images will influence the perception of the people you're trying to reach and build rapport with. The use of imagery makes a direct connection with the audience by setting tone and mood, providing brand recognition, and telling a story. This knowledge and the application of it can give you total control of how you are perceived. People are influenced by what you show. And when something's off, it's hard to detect, but it could be the decisive factor to stay or leave your site. It's not enough to just say it. The photography, layout, copy, and other design elements are a balance act that should clearly communicate the message and represent the business. It's especially important to use right photographs in an image-rich industry, such as interior design. If your words say one thing and the pictures are not delivering a wow moment, you run the risk of being, being mediocre, or worse, you can create a negative impression. In this website example, we know the designer values beauty and function and inspiration. We know these are important because she's highlighted the words. But just saying something doesn't have the same effect as providing an immersive website experience. Is the page beautiful? Is the text legible? And do you feel inspired? The best way to describe visual is impact is when all of the elements come together. 
the copy supported and illustrated by the images and the layout all makes a statement to express your overall cohesive message. Personality, passion, and quality all have to come together on the one page, the home page. In this example, the builder told us she wanted to attract a different clientele. She wanted new projects that utilized all of her talents and abilities. Her old site hadn't been touched in at least 10 years, and she hated it, but she just didn't know where to start. Our consultation process provided her the visual impact guidelines, which directed our team for a new logo, a website design, content, and the placement of photographs. As a builder, it's important to stay current and informed. Codes change, products come and go. So it stands to reason her website needs to be current. We used a parallax site, one that is modern and in keeping with the mobile user's experience. And that's just where we started. These are just screenshots, and I don't have the before site to show, but this client wanted to attract a sophisticated clientele, one that had an interest in their heart, heart health and personal well-being. The old site was a mixed variety of non-professional photographs and a mismatch element. Our consultation became more than just building a new site. We helped her create a clear vision, reframing her business model, and gave her specific outlines which positioned her favorably attracting her new premier clients. The arrogant bastard brand and stone brewery is genius <laughs> at creating a tribe of loyal fans. For example, <laughs> my cousin's son from Montana came to visit his California cousins and stone brewery was one of his must see destination spots. He had a merchandise order from friends that, that they could have easily purchased online but the novelty of having it brought right off the floor by one of the friends made the shirts extra special to them. It's pretty clear who this brand is appealing to. The brand has a look. It's edgy, it's youthful and energetic, and the customization of the images is very distinguishable, clear enough to be recognized and identified as different and in harmony with who they have as their target market. The look and feel is the same image processing and by creating a high definition, crispy and grungy look. The use of unusual angles also helps because people are wired to know it's different. Now this and the next image I captured to, uh, I, I created to capture a specific feel for a personal San Diego Nights project. The congruent look of these images is distinguishable enough to be considered a branded look. The Boss Sisters use a creative image process for their branded look and feel. And as soon as, I, as, soon as I see it, I know it's them. I know it's from them. Changing out an image can be a quick solution to get better results. In this example, I advised one simple change to a blog post about a rare, rare rainy day in San Diego. Her original photograph was not representative of the professionalism this window seal manufacturing company needed to be associated with. I suggested that a picture of a window showing a rainstorm with lots of condensation would have been a better choice than the one she took with her cell phone. And because the photograph is the first thing anyone looks at, this image clearly created enough interest for the rest of her story was read. Showing what you do is important. Or sh no, I'm sorry. Show <laughs> what you show is important. And visual impact is what separates your business from other similar businesses in the hearts and minds of your audience. The look, feel, tone, and spirit of what you do allow you to create higher value for your products and services. And when you provide an immersive and emotional client experience, you create trust and convey distinction. Wow. If your website isn't living up to its potential, that's what we're here for, to help you create excitement and connection by maximizing your visual impact. So we've designed a powerful tool, our visual impact consultation. We've made it easy to get started with us. Our website 
impact review process is a professional look at the visual effectiveness of your current site, providing a unique bird's eye view from knowledgeable professionals. Our process gives you both a look, a fresh look at the perception you're creating now and the tools to create a more powerful impact. Woohoo! <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Well, thank you. I mean, and I know you've got your contact info here if anybody wants to reach you, right? So um, we have some questions. Um, and I think, you know, it was really interesting to see the pictures, you know, that you are saying the before and afters. But I know one of the questions we've got from one of our attendees is, you know, how do you, how do you select the right image? Can you go through some tips on that, like selecting the right image for your website? A yes, more select the image, yes, and, and, it, and it all kind of comes back to um, what you want people to know about you. So that's a pretty broad category is to select the right image, but I know a lot of people use stock images, and I'm saying there's really nothing wrong with stock. A lot of the, the photographs I shared today were my own, but a, a number of them were also stock. You want to look at the image, and does it feel like the feeling you want to to um, the feeling that you want to portray. Um, if you're trying to make a point and it's, and it's um, based on an emotional response that you're trying to elicit from your, from, your, from your clients, you can actually do a search based on emotions. You can, you can actually do a search on uh, uh, adjectives and, and descriptive words and the Google search engines will find images uh, a lot of stock uh, photographs, so stock, stock, um, what am I trying to say? The, the stock houses actually have that built into their search engines. Um, so that's one of the reasons, that's one of the ways to decide. And also, if, if, you, if you're in a position, if you have a business where you're in a position to be able to actually create your own look, like the Brave Girls did or like, uh, or the Boss Girls did and, and uh, and like arrogant bastard, that that would be so cool because then you're able to actually create your own brand, your own style through the photographs. And remember, the photographs are the first thing anyone looks at. So if you can create some kind of consistency, and it's not that difficult to do. There's so many programs that are that you'll you're able to uh, create some vignettes or some overlays and that kind of thing. It just takes a little bit of of uh, practice and and uh, some education, and you can learn how to do that. So the answer is a little bit varied because it depends on what you're trying to do. If it's just an image for a blog post, say, um, you you want to find some. If you can create some some kind of visuals that uh, are similar, color those types of things. There's a lot to it. You want to have. I think you know. Things. Yeah, you're so right. There's so many different ways you can go. You know, can you touch on, this is my question as a follow-up to the mm -hmm. um, one that asked about the visuals and the images. It's like, how do you, I mean, I know what we've struggled with the idea of choosing stock images versus actual, let's say, pictures that are from our events or with members. It's like, what are, mm -hmm. you know, what's your opinion on do's and don'ts on yeah. that, Patricia, of yeah, when, when to you use stock them versus... When you don't. Yeah, very, yeah. Very good question. And, and it, there is a time and a place for all of it. Um, let me just say real quickly that the stock images that you do choose need to represent your ideal client. Um, mm -hmm. Who do you want to attract? What's their demographic? Are you, are you talking to women? Are you talking to men? Make sure you show both. Are they in business? You know, that kind of thing. That's pretty obvious. I think we all understand that. But um, when you look, when you think about your website as being uh, representative of your business, it is, your, it is for marketing. It's not, it's, it's, it needs to represent and create, it's a type of container that creates the wow, right? So. You can use home taken photographs, but not as marketing pieces. They're not representing you. You want to be represented as professional, clean, consistent. But if you're, um, if you're writing a, a blog post thing for you, for, uh, for, for women, uh, connect to women of influence, Yes, take some photographs of people receiving awards. They don't have to be done professional because people don't expect that. People, people, everyone takes pictures now with their cell phones, and the cell phones do awesome. So just, you know, I mean, 
you can use those, but don't use them on your homepage and don't use them in, in, in you can use them in communication, not in marketing. I hope that's clear. Does that make sense? Do you find it's okay to mix, like using stock photography and like real images that you shoot yourself and like just throughout the website, or do you have to choose one versus the other ideally, or or is there does it matter? Does is there a variable there? <laughs> I think I think that there is, and and when you have a page that you are using stock images, and then all of a sudden you throw in a, a homegrown image, it throws it off. It throws that consistency off. So I would say yes. It's there's, it's there's definitely not a good idea to to mix the two looks. Um, have a page that you know if you're doing a landing page, you want professional. If you're doing uh, a newsletter, it doesn't have to be as professional. Um, see what I mean? No, good good advice. Okay. Good advice. You know, I mean, I think the other question that's coming up here is, you know, how do you define good visual impact versus bad? Because you know, this person said. They go, because everybody has a different opinion of what they shared. I'm like, that's true. It's like, how do you determine like what's good versus not good visual impact? Yeah, and that's a good question. And I have a whole seminar on it. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, maybe just give us a few what, nuggets. <laughs> what is a good image, right? Okay. So um, for one, it needs to, simplicity is best when you're looking at images. But is the image, does the image support the message that you're trying to convey? And that's, that's a really good place to start. The direction of the eyes, if it's, if it's, uh, say if it's a, a person, the placement of that image, if they're looking to the right or to the left, needs, if they're looking to the right, then the content that you're trying to share needs to be to the right. Uh, you know, that, those are some placement elements that need to be considered when you're when you're placing images and choosing images for a layout and that's what graphic designers are so awesome at doing um, a good image is of course sharp not um, um, not too overly processed unless that's your look consistency is really important in what a good image is so a good image really kind of depends on on you on what you want to what you what you're trying to say um, gosh, yeah. It's, it, so I think those might be some good tips. I you love that. I mean, can you, you don't want them? Yeah. I think, well, I ahead. think the question I've got in tandem with this question, Patricia, is if I'm reading this right from our attendee and it's from, from Paul is, is his question is, I think, you know, evaluating it. Like everybody has a different opinion. So when you look at it, okay, this is good visual impact versus not. I know you talked about some of the elements of even font, the color scheme, is that consistent? Are there any tips you might give some of our attendees on how to have like a checklist of what, in addition to font and the color um, scheme, of what would make a good visual impact? You mentioned sizing of the image. Like what's a good size for an image on a website page with the content on mm -hmm. there as well. Is there any sort of tips on that? Yeah, there are. And I, the first, the first question, let me answer that one first is, does the image make you happy? Because mm. when you share images that make you happy, that you, that, that you want to, um, because we want people to connect with us. So for example, if you're, if, if you use an image that is, um, an ocean, say for example, know that horizontal lines create harmony, they, and they actually pro portray a feeling of peace. And the color is blue, very peaceful. If you're trying to create energy, you want to look for an image that has sharp diagonal lines or more vertical lines. Those are the types of things. If you just look at an image and understand how it makes you feel when you see that image, be in touch with how you're feeling, and that's the type of that that would be a really good clue of as as to which you uh, how to pair a good message a heartfelt message with the right image so it's consistent and it's in harmony with the so a combination there's a connection between what you're showing for example the image that the lady uh, the designer who had an image that was dark um it didn't really portray beauty she wanted us to to See how good she was. She wanted us to understand that that beauty and, and passion and inspiration 
more important to her. And those are good things to have to choose a designer that those things are important. But when you look at the entire container of her site, it was blotchy, it was not connecting, and the only way that we we didn't feel the harmony that she wanted us to feel by looking at that first website. Because the photograph was dark, it wasn't it didn't it just it wasn't in harmony with what she wanted to express. So using that right. example, that's how you can understand what you're trying to get across with for your message. Trust, um, you know, just, how do you how do you portray trust? Okay, well think about that. How it would be people holding hands, people uh, looking at each other, straightening out. Those are types of things that when you think of trust. What kind of image comes up in your mind? Right. So that that's one that that's the answer to those that to that first part of the question. The second is there are Google it, <laughs> right? What size? Right. Is there? Because they, because there's so many different sizes that work for different platforms. Facebook has their own size. Um, you can take a larger image and put it into Canva or one of the other creative. Um, you can create like a visual content where you put the, the your words or an inspirational quote. We've all seen them. And there's a beautiful photograph in the back and, and the types in the front. Something like Canva does that. You don't have to worry about the size. They let you choose if you're going to use Instagram or Facebook. So that's automatically done for you. But if you're taking your own images and you're trying to uh, upload them into Facebook um, or Instagram, I think Instagram sizes them, size them for you too, but there are there are specifics. Your web developer, if uh, if you're using choosing a web developer that uh, wants your largest size, give them the largest size, right? So that's all the kind of the technical stuff, and and um, it, you you can find out you, there's there's resources to answer that because it is there. So it's hard to just say one number yeah no I get I mean you're funny because it's like your answers you're like it depends on all these things when the questions come because I <laughs> you know everything is always it's like well if this then that and I and you know I respect you for that one trying to answer the question you know here's another yeah. one from someone um okay, you. you know you're gonna love this one because it's like okay here this is from Patricia and uh, Patricia another Patricia and she says mm -hmm. it's like our web website changes all the time we have a hodgepodge on our site of old versus new versus different pages. We are going crazy. How do we determine, you know, how do we, de oh, I'm trying to read it. How do we determine, you know, what to change and what to keep, I think is our question. Sorry. It's like I'm mm -hmm. trying to, okay. you know, read, yeah. read, read, feel the force here on some of these questions. That's her question. <laughs> Okay, well, Patricia, I feel I feel you. <laughs> it is it, it, the best place to start, as I said in the in the uh, webinar here today, is to start with you. What is the purpose of the website? What is your defining goal? What is your mission statement? What do people need to know about you or the business that you're that that you're representing? And if you can get your, I I provide guidelines, but you can create your own guidelines by using by answering those questions who am i what do i need people to know who is my idea client and and who do i want to attract who do i want to most work with and think about that person when you're designing your website and always run it through that filter what is my mission statement if my mission statement is like eric faster to make people uh to, to create a place where people uh, of the certain demographic can come and enjoy good food, good brew, and uh, have fun, make friends. You know, I mean, Steve Jobs is a killer on on what his mission statement is: beauty and you know, function. So, if you have that kind of mission statement for yourself or your own business, that's what filters that you set up for every decision that you're going to make. Is this does this image fit our mission? I hope that helps. Yeah, it did. No, I think it, and it, you know, and again, you've got so many great examples. Can you, um, this is my question, not Patricia, not anybody else, but my question is, can you share just sure. a kind of like before, I know you showed some images, but can you share like a story of one of your 
clients that they, they came what they were frustrated with and, you know, what the end result was with what you recommended to them and did for them just as a client experience. Well, I would love to. How much time do I have? <laughs> <laughs> got about five more minutes, so, but we got, got just minutes. a couple okay. more questions. Okay, cool, good. Um, a, a really good example was the, the, uh, the spa company. Uh, when, when I first met her, it was through someone who was her sales, her sales rep. And her sales rep and I got to know each other. She ended up, she's from San Diego, but she moved to, to uh, uh, Utah where this company was. And so she says, God, Betty, they need help. Please help. And the lady was, really had a huge heart for people who really wanted to embrace a better and more healthier lifestyle. Her business was based on service. Really, that's where their money was coming from. And she had a much bigger vision, but she didn't own it. And by going through the process, from what my friend, the, her sales marketing person told me, is that, that, that Patricia, your, your process that you took her through made her get real clear and it helped define the future for everything that they did in their business. Um, we defined their ideal client. Um, I help them understand that, the, that what people see when they come to their website is how that they're going to relate to the business. She, she had homegrown pictures of just some spas in people's backyards. You could almost see the trash can in the background. You know, that's not the type of clientele <laughs> that you need to attract when you're trying to, 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 you know, she wanted to attract her premier clients. She even wanted to turn her, her um, show, showroom into a place where people could come, like um, uh, share, you know, health tips, um, Pilates instructors could come and talk about something oh, very and, cool. and, and, and nutrition. She, that was her bigger vision. But for over five years, she just kept putting it off because she didn't know where to start. So that's just, wow. you know, it, it's, a, it's a bigger picture, Michelle. It's not just what images are you going to use. It's like, what is your purpose? Where, is, where are you? You've got to make sure that what you're doing is the passion that you have because it's not sustainable. It's not just about money. And yeah, no, I thought it was, it was, it was great. Even when you showed us that state farm agent on the, on the visuals, that was, you know, the different before and after of how you showed his business side, his residential side, and then that family home, home side, you know, that really made a mm -hmm. personal approach on it, which leads me to my last question. And that is, you know, how, what are some tips you have in creating a more emotional impact, right? I mean, how do you, I don't know how you define that, but that's the question is how, this is from, oh my gosh, Tanya, how do I create an emotional response online is the question. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay. Hopefully it's a little clearer now that I said uh, from what I've answered. Um, people make, as we know, people base their decisions on how they feel. So how is the site that you're using, your homepage that you're using to represent you, how does it feel? So if you are, uh, and I'm talking about emotion, I'm talking about, I'm not talking about total emotion, I'm talking about how people feel when they come to your site, because emotions are not, are not just, um, you know, emotions are full gamut, right? This makes me feel edgy, this makes me feel uncomfortable, I don't, I feel confused, I feel, um, I don't know what this, website wants me to do next there's too many bullets like i'm confused i'm lost okay move on next you know so it that's the type when i'm talking about emotion we're not we're not talking about wearing your heart on your sleeve type of emotion although that works too <laughs> but, Good. for a nonprofit, right yeah i mean exactly for a nonprofit that's yeah, looking for, for <clears throat> tug at the heart yeah but show right. it when you're like with a nonprofit. don't show an emancipated you know uh, horse that's that's dying ribs and everything else show horse that, that that elicits the beauty that elicits that side of the emotion i want to help i want to help people and i feel good about this side those are the types of emotions i'm, I'm talking about yeah well i, I mean I, it's hard too because I, I what i love that you said earlier was you talked about always keep that you know the client's the client, I mean, they call it an avatar, they call it a persona, but, you know, mm -hmm. I, I think that's something, because, you know, sometimes it's so easy if you start doing things on a website, you lose track when you 
at least this has been for us as an association that, you know, you start adding things and, you know, then things change and it's like you lose a little bit of that consistency. I mean, that's happened to us and will continue to happen yeah. to us because things evolve and change. But, you know, do you recommend kind of like when someone should come in and just, you know, kind of like a business plan, you know, they say do a game plan once a year and then check in quarterly for, action and, and results. What do you recommend for somebody with their website? And this will be the, my final question is, what do you recommend as kind of like a do a once over of your site from a visual impact standpoint and take a step back and evaluate it? I mean, once a year, every other year, every month, what do you well, recommend? Yeah, I'd like to answer that with, it's not about time, it's about when you're making changes. Mm. Because a website, you know, for us, our websites are looking old, and well, I mean, they have to be updated. Of course, you want to keep you want to keep a nice, updated website, one that make it that's really important. They have a mobile responsive site as well, because people are searching on their mobile phones. If you don't have that, it's definitely time for a change. So look at the uh, look at that. But if you have new product, or if even if the avatar of your clientele is starting to change. If you want to attract new and different clients, if you want to grow your business or even take it to a new direction or a new level, those are the times you really need to think about how am I being perceived and how to change that perception is, first off, everything that we do, it ends up going back to the website and, and um, that website really needs to draw people in, make them help them to to feel connected to what you're saying because right. um that you know i mean that's the determining factor so yes check it anytime you're ready to make a change now for me i'm visual and creative and i know a lot of a lot of people like myself they want to go in and change out those images all the time you know and it's like i'm uh, getting old i've seen it a hundred times i'm gonna change it out well don't change for the sake of change because people who uh, who are coming to your website haven't seen your website yet, so it's not it's not old to them. If you, if you follow what I'm saying there, I know so it is, and it's like I, I, those are some good reasons. Mm -hmm. They are good reasons. And last question, I keep saying last question, but how do you want people to reach you? Do you want them to get your contact us online, and can you share your website or how you want to be reached? Yeah, the website is on the uh, well. It's not showing now. There it is. Wait. Uh, yep. website imageconsulting.com there is a form there and if you fill that form out I will personally contact you to make sure that we're a good fit and then I can give you a, a, a website review and let you know based on what you've told me about your business what you want people to know about you what's important and who who you're trying to reach from a bird's eye view, I can take a look at that website and let you know if it's connecting. If it's not, I will definitely be providing some really good suggestions as to imagery, tools you can use, and give you some um, uh, some suggestions as to how you can improve your marketing overall. And I have an awesome team of people that are working with me to help me do that. I know you did that for our association. It was very valuable in some of the feedback you gave us. So I appreciate that. And I hope all of our attendees will take advantage of Patricia's offer. Um, I want to say thank you, Patricia, for being our, oh, our, our spot leader today. Because I think, you know, again, I'm going. a... Yeah, well, I, I really appreciate all the things you shared because I think today I'm very visual. You know, so many people, it's like, man, we're like, you have the attention span of a gnat, you know, and we really want to mm -hmm. see that visual impact. But I also know in reality, it's like it's always something that evolves in your business. So thank you for your time. And to our attendees, oh, my gosh, thank you for joining us and, and, and attending. We'll be back again in a couple of weeks with another Women Need webinar series so you can lead, achieve, and succeed as a female leader in business. Thanks for joining us, and you all have a great week.